Hello all and welcome to Cloudy ML. So in this video, I will be discussing about these six interview questions for Excel, which were asked in one of the Blinkit interviews. And howsoever, these are mostly most frequent questions which are often asked in an Excel interview. So let's get started. So our first question is, what are the relatives referencing, relative cell referencing and the absolute cell referencing? Or in the other words, you can say what is a relative cell reference and absolute cell reference. So you can explain by saying that relative references change when a formula is copied to another cell. On the other hand, absolute references remain constant no matter where they are copied. Let's demonstrate this by a simple example. So let's say that I have some number which is 23, uh, maybe 67 and 50. I have three numbers here and I have 56, 56, 45 and 89. I have these three numbers and I have to do the sum. So what we can do, we can simply write the equal to uh, formula here and equal to and then use a sum function. When I use a sum function, I'll be dragging these three cell here and my total will come. Now you can see as in the formula, you can see here that it is from cell B2 to D2. And if I want to sum this up, so I can drag this up and my formula changed from B2 to D2 to B3 to D3. This is what a uh, relative cell reference does. As I said, relative cell reference change when copied from one cell to the other. In another way, you can also explain this relative cell reference as whenever you want to perform any aggregation and you use a cell address basically like B2, B, C3, all these things as cell address and then when you use the calculation and you copy it, these actually drag down. So what happens is my E2 cell is saying that I want to add up the left three rows the left three cells and what are the left three cells from E2 it is D2, C2 and B2 and when I dragged it down what it said that E3 cell said that I want to sum up all the leftmost three values, three, va three cell values on the left of me. So what is in the left of E the uh, E3 which is D3, C3 and B3. So this is how a relative cell reference works. Now what is absolute? Absolute doesn't change. So suppose sup I want to divide some these numbers by say 9. So what I can do? I can simply use equal to sign, use this cell value here divided by 9. Once I do that, I get the answer. But suppose I drag it all. Suppose I drag it like this, what I will get? My, uh, my uh, values will not be shown. Why? Because here, as you say, this is F5. The cell address is F5 here. I can like highlight it in the yellow. And when I drag it, so this F5 changed to G5 and hence it again changed to H5 because it was not fixed. It was it, it used a relative cell referencing. So in this case, what you can do, you can simply select F5 here and press F4 so that you can make it absolute. Remember absolute cell referencing formula is you have to put a dollar sign against the column number and dollar sign before the row number. So it is like F5 so F column I have I have put a dollar sign and fifth row I have put a dollar sign now it is fixed. And you can also do it this by selecting this cell, uh, cell value that is F5 and pressing F4 from your keyboard. 
Once I press enter and then if I will drag it now, when I will drag it like this, my calculation will auto update. Why? Because now if you see the formula here, now if I if you see the formula, it is all F5 divided by F5. It will not be G5 or H5. So this is a basic difference between absolute and relative cell reference. And this is how you can actually demonstrate to the recruiter as well. So let us go to the second question. The second question says, what is the difference between count, count A and count blank? This is also one of the basic question which are asked in an Excel interview and the most basic one as well. So let us write, let me show you how to demonstrate it. So let us write some random numbers like maybe 5. Let us write 5, 7. Then I will not write anything. Then I will write maybe apple. Then I will write 8. So these are the 5 cell which I have actually filled up. These are 5. Now what a count function does? Count function will only count or only uh, return the number of numerical values filled up in the cell. So for that you can say count sorry it's count and then you can say from b7 to b11 once i do that my value it is showing as 3 this is count black this is count function so what it means is what are the numerical values i have put up here so the numerical values are 5 7 and 8 so that is why my count is 3 so this is this this is the count now what does count a does C O U N T A. One second. I have not put equal to sign. So C O U N T A. So this is count A function. What does a count A function? Let us see. So when I do that, count A from B7 to B11, I see the value comes out to be 4. The Y value is coming out to be 4 because it my count a actually counts the number of numerical uh, values input in the cell including the string value so i have 5 7 and 8 which are the numerical values and one is a string value which is apple that is why it is showing 4 here so i can say here this is count a this is count A which is showing to be 4. Now let us see what is a what count blank does. So as you might have already guessed now that count blank would obviously calculate the number of count number of blank cells here. So again I have uh, selected the range of cells which is B7 to B11 and when I put it I get 1. Why? Because I have one blank cell here. This is this is this, this is my five values, five seven blank then apple then eight. Now it is showing count what count blank is showing. It is showing one of the blank cell which is left. It is it is shown by count blank. So this is what a count count a and count blank function does. I hope this was pretty easy and you have all followed it up. Let us go back to third question. The third question is how can you mask strings in Excel? So this is also one of the questions which are mostly chosen by the recruiters. So suppose I want to hide some mask some number. So there are various ways to mask and you can actually uh, take out your own or consider your own function to do that. But I will give you a very simple example. Suppose I have a name and my name is Akash, Akash Raj. This is the name of the string and I want to get only the last three digit 
of the name and rest all digit I want to mask it from a star. So what I can do? What formula I can use? So for that I will use a REPT or repetition function. What it does is it actually repeats up a string value or a text by the uh, given number of times. So I will put star. I want to mask it with a star. So I'll just choose star here. Sorry. And I'll again put double quotes. And how many number of times? So number of how many number of times is the length function. I will use here the length function. What a length function does, it will give you the entire length of this cell. So the length function of H2 what is the length that is 9 and why it is 9 it is also counting the blank space between so a is 1 k is 2 a is 3 s is 4 h is 5 blank is 6 r is 7 a is 8 and j is 9 so this is what it is showing so length of h2 minus 3 so it will come 6 number of times here when I'll put it OK, so this is what it will show. But I also want the name Raj here. So what I can do here? In this case, I will use AND function. Ampersand. So here I will use again the WRITE function. What a WRITE function does? It displays the right hand values of the string, whatever you want to show. So I want to use this as h2 as the text and what is the number of character it is 3 so once I do that I can mask this number name the Akash Raj it is masked as this star and Raj you can write any name suppose you can write David Copperfield for example this is the name you want and you can mask it so you can use your relative cell reference you can just drag it here and you can find it ELD the last three names so accordingly you can choose how you can uh, you can choose to mask the strings like this by use of basic functions like wrapped function uh, write function length function you can use all these things to do that so I hope this is clear to you all let us go to our fourth question explain the use of if function so you can explain what a if function does if function actually displays the particular aggregation from a particular uh, not a aggregation but it it uh, it can uh, like show the aggregation as well as some some comment which you want to show so let us give an example let us see this by an example how to use the if function so suppose I have two person A and B and both of this person are actually uh, selling 3 lakh for one uh, week this is week one I am writing it as week one why because I am telling you the target uh, or the sales done by each of them in each week so week one the sales done by A is A, uh, 3 3 lakhs in week two the sales done by A is 7 lakhs week three it is done as 5 lakh sorry 5 lakh and week 4 it is done as 3 lakhs or maybe say 9 lakhs what B does is B is doing 6 lakhs for first week 8 lakhs for second week 1 lakh for the third week and 5 lakh for the last week now if I say that my monthly target is maybe 25 lakhs what is my monthly target is it is 25 lakh 
and I want to see whether anyone has achieved all these things or not. So whether someone has achieved the target or not. So we can use sum function and we can sum all these sales for the entire week. So this is 24 and what he has done? Let's see. So I can use the sum function and I will uh, select the rows here and he has done 20 lakhs. So suppose I can I say that the sales the target is 23 lakhs just in order to tell you how to use if function. So guys here there are only two rows which I have taken for demonstration but in real life you might be having any scenario with like hundred and thousands of rows so you cannot always check and now you can you you can you know analyze your data so for that only your if function is happening uh, if if function uh, is uh, is used so here if somebody asks is i want some comment here the comment whether some uh, the person has achieved the target or not so how i can use it i can simply use the if function which is this I will use this if function here and I will say this is my logical test. What is my logical test? Logical test says that if my L11 cell is greater than or equal to I can say greater than or equal to the target value. We can say that target achieved. We can say target achieved and if the person is has not uh, achieved the target we can say that target missed and that's it and also I will just edit my formula once more because I want the target this target is I 15 and I want this to be fixed. I want it to be absolute. So I will press F4 here. Sorry. I will use F4 here to make it absolute because this should not change. Otherwise, if I will drag it down or drag it across due to relative cell reference, it will change. So I'll use this absolute cell referencing here. So a what comment I get target achieve. And if I drag this, if I drag this here, one second, target missed. So it is automatic filtration. So you can also use the same thing for the other numbers also. Suppose there is some guy who has achieved six, uh, three, nine and eight. Maybe these all things he has achieved sales and I can find the final value I can again I can drag this and automatically I will get the comment of target achieved so this is auto uh, task this is the this this is what if function does it actually makes your task very simple and you don't have to individually look at the rows and you have to you know analyze whether somebody has done the target or whatever whatever things or, or whatever day to day things you do so this actually automizes your task. So this is how if function is used. I hope it was clear to you all. If you have any doubt, please comment on the sections uh, on the comment box. We will be very happy to answer you. So after this four question, let us go to fifth question. How will you use drop down in Excel? This is also very common question in an Excel interview that how do you use a drop down? It is very simple. I tell you, if you want to, suppose I want to, uh, first of all, you have to understand why the drop down is used. It is because you need to validate the data. Suppose you have like uh, five or six Excel files coming to you and every and you want them to fill up the number of cars. The their maybe uh, experiment has. So anybody can write like Tata as capital T, cap, something somebody can write Tata as like this. Somebody can write Tata as this. Somebody can write Tata as this. So there are n number of ways people can write text. 
and when you want to compile them into one excel sheet it gets very cumbersome and very difficult in order to understand or order to make them into the same format so that is why you use a data validation and how you can use that you just have to select a cell here go to your data and go to your data validation once you go to data validation you can uh, you can uh, select on allow uh, and you i don't want to allow any value i want to allow a list and what list you want so i need tata ford uh, maybe maruti kia Volkswagen I just want them to use these strings only from the list I do not want anyone to use any of the strings from their own so I can just put ok and once I do that there will be a small drop down here from here you can actually select so I can select Ford here and you can actually draw drag it also down and you can also have all this thing and suppose you want to write Ford in some other way for example I want to write Ford like this and if I use this it will show an error that means you can only use Ford as this you can only write Volkswagen as this only use Kia whatever list of strings which you have given so this actually this drop down actually makes a task very easier when you want to float a excel file across the organization so that everybody can fill it and give it to you because nobody will be making that mistake of you know uh, using variable type of strings for each cell so i hope data validation is also clear to you all this is a very simple concept now my last uh, question is how would you use or how do you use pivot table and dsum basically this question wants to know how is dsum and power uh, pivot table different from each other so for that let let us do one thing let us make a very simple list here i want to use um, i want to uh, and analyze the sale of fruits so I'll say the fruit can be apple, fruit, fruit can be orange, then fruit can be apple again, then it can be kiwi, it can be grape, and then again apple. And what are the sales done by these, uh, from these fruits, what, what sales of apple did I do? Maybe 100 rupees, orange is 200 rupees. Apple is 300 rupees, Kiwi is 400 rupees, Grape is 500 rupees and Apple is again 600 rupees. Suppose I want to analyze, I want to analyze uh, and maybe let's say, let's, let's do one thing more. Let's type region. This is north, this is west this is east this is south this is again north so guys i'm making up the data set right here for the example so that you can also understand how you can you know uh, face the interview and how you can actually demonstrate it from the excel directly so what happens when i use a pivot table so let's try it once and let then we can uh, see so i i want to insert so first of all you have to insert pivot table from here from table range and i want to do it in existing worksheet here so let's do it so this is the pivot table which i got so i have three items here suppose i want to analyze the sales as per region so i can put sales to sorry i can put items to column and I can put region to rows so I have all I have all this items here you can see I have row and column like this I'll just minimize the screen a bit so that you can actually 
see the entire window here so you can see i have row as the region and column as item and i will put sales into values so once i do that i get a very quick analysis table which says that you can see your east the apple sold in east region is 300 north only grape and apples has been uh, sold and you have got the total of 600 south only kiwi sold for 400 and west you have only apple orange sold and which is 800 so total sales done is 2100 so you can see what pivot table does pivot table actually makes your the entire complex data set into a pivot table it, it turns into a cross tab cross table uh, uh, table in one way and you can actually analyze them very quickly here without need to filter and all these things you, you can do that suppose from this i just want to understand what is the apple sales what is the total apple sales across all the region so what I, how can I get how can I know that so I can say apple is here in east the apples were sold for 300 north it was sold for 100 and west it was sold for 600 so I got 1000 rupees sale from only apple 500 from grape 400 from kiwi orange from uh, 200 from orange so this is how you can use this table and also you can derive some meaningful insights like I can say that orange are the least preferred fruit. People don't actually eat oranges. Apples are the most uh, frequently buy fruit. So this is how you can use the pivot table. Now suppose how the D sum is different from pivot table. Let us see now. So this pivot table is done. Now the same thing if I want to if I if I would ask you a question that okay I I have this list and I want to know how much sales has done by Apple selling Apple and maybe this list is maybe thousand and thousands of rows big and out of that list I will ask that how many uh, how much uh, Apple has been sold across all the region. One way is to use a pivot table and quickly tell the answer. The other way is you can use a D sum function. D first sum function actually sums up the sums up the value by the given condition. You have D sum, you have D count. So you you can actually sum the values as per some condition. So let us see how. So I want to write item here again item and I want apple as my fru uh, fruit fru for which I want to analyze the sales across all the region and I will write sales here so now what I can do I can simply put a equal to sign, uh, sign write a d sum here once I do that I should open my argument window the first argument says about the da database. What is the database you want to consider? So my database is from this, this, this small table is my database, which is B2 to D8. This is done. Now, what is the field you want? For which you want to, you know, uh, uh, for field, what you can see is add the number in the field of records in the database that match the conditions you specify. So I want to analyze the sales so I just put fields as sales here and what is the criteria criteria says that I want item as an apple this is the criteria I have put criteria as e2 to e3 here e2 to e3 because I want see the day I have loaded a database I have a specified a field like what I want what some what column sum I want so I have said that C2 so I want the sum of sales now what is the criteria criteria is I want the sales of what I want the sales of Apple so I have selected item and Apple here so once I do that I get 1000 here if I 
leave this and if I use Kiwi here, this get auto updated to 400. I can write grape as well. This will be auto updated to 500. So you can see you can you just have to specify your criteria and as and when you will change your names this sum will auto update. A pivot table is a high complex table uh, it, it is actually a cross tabulation and you can derive out plenty of meaningful insights from one given table. But a D sum can also help you for a particular summation for a given summation. Particular uh, summation from a given conditions actually. So this is how you can use dsums function. So I hope guys these all interview questions were helpful for you all and if you have any query about it you can free freely uh, comment in our comment box and if you write the uh, if you if you like our content please go ahead and subscribe to your to your people and to your all the folks out there who really needs some uh, some help in excel so i hope you like this video thank you